evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word from the Lord, or what does the Bible say? It's a special presentation. It, either way, we are we bought this airtime or secured this airtime in connection with our tent meeting. And if you're at the tent, or you went out to the tent tonight, you noticed it wasn't there. We decided that we would wrap it up due to the weather and uh, uh, just spare people from coming out and sitting in the cold. We were nice and comfortable for most of the tent uh, time, but when the weather keeps dropping, the it's hard to, to warm that tent up. So if you went out tonight, I'm sorry. We tried to uh, get the word out as best we could. But nonetheless, we still will be on television uh, the rest of this week. Uh, this is Tuesday night, so Wednesday night, Thursday night at our regular time. Friday night is all going to be a, a special productions of What Does the Bible Say? And, and so we're uh, glad that you are able to... Uh, to reach us in that way. We hope that you are prepared for study from God's Word because we are always prepared to give you an answer and to study the Bible with you. If you would like a home Bible study, we would like to come to your house and, and study God's Word with you in a very uh, private setting. And maybe you could ask questions that you might normally feel uncomfortable about asking, but we always want to make sure that you can reach us and know how to reach us. And so you can do that by writing to, to us, P.O. Box 1983. Uh, regional North Carolina, R276-340-2653. Or you can reach me at a word from the Lord at gmail.com. You can reach uh, Johnny Robertson at uh, uh, 276 I believe his phone number, and, and Bible says 81 at hotmail.com. Sorry I don't have that up for you, but if you're in the Danville area, 120 American Legion, you can meet with the brethren there in, in Danville, or 823 Starling Avenue, uh, we assemble at the Holiday Inn Express here in Reedsville. Uh, we're glad to have you uh, anytime you can. I told uh, Mark Childry that um, I certainly didn't mind following uh, Orson Welles' War of the Worlds because it seems that oftentimes our productions seem to generate the same kind of panic or grief amongst people, li uh, listeners and viewers. They get stressed out and fighting mad is what our commercial was running because individuals don't like to hear the truth, but I hope that tonight, that you won't be fighting mad, that you will actually let us reason together so that we can come to an agreement on what God says. Now, it may be the case that when you hear something, you might want to call in and give me a piece of your mind. And the phone lines are going to be open uh, after a while, and we're going to certainly uh, afford you the opportunity to, to call in and give us a piece of your mind if you, shoot, if you so choose to do. But let me just start by saying... Uh, if you feel inclined to give someone a piece of your mind, please be careful about it. You know, I, I was uh, watching uh, uh, the television program this uh, afternoon, and individuals were calling in, in about the things that were going on down here at the Settle Street Station and the, the awning that was taken down. And, you know, in city councils and things like that, there seems to always be someone or a group of persons who like to give a piece of their mind. They want to tell the, the elected officials, or they want to tell the PTA, they want to tell the school board, whatever. They want to give them a piece of their mind, and what they do is they approach it in such a way that they are generally upset or angry or maybe just full of passion, I guess we might say. But nonetheless, they speak what's on their mind. Now, I say be careful when you give someone a piece of your mind because some people don't have that much to spare. But also, notice what the Bible says. Proverbs 29 and verse 11 says, A fool uttereth all on all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. I know some people that say, well, I'm going to give a piece of my mind, or I just say what's on my mind, or what, what comes to my mind, I say it. Well, the Bible says you're a fool. But don't give, so don't give a piece of your mind until you have thought about it. Don't give a piece of your mind unless you have thoroughly and, and uh, carefully uh, analyzed the situation and maybe... Uh, uh, then spoken with salt. The Bible says that your speech be always with salt so that you know how to answer someone, Colossians 4 and verse 6. So what we're talking about is individuals who are speaking their mind. But one thing I want you to notice, friends, in order to speak your mind, in order to give someone a piece of your mind, you have to think it first. It has to be in your mind before you can ever say it. Now, I know that some people may speak without thinking, but nonetheless, whatever they speak is in their mind regardless. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 34. He said, O generation of vipers, 
How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It has to be in your heart or in your mind before it comes out of your mouth. And so what you speak when you give someone a piece of your mind is just that. You are speaking what comes from your mind. Now, I know, I know that, that individuals oftentimes have a lot of things running through their mind that they want to say. They want to tell off the, uh, the, the city council. Maybe they want to tell off the, the policeman that gives them a ticket. Maybe they want to call in on this program and tell us off and give a piece of their mind. And that's certainly their prerogative, and we certainly uh, welcome that. But think about this, friends, and keep this in mind. If you give someone a piece of your mind, even before you say it, it has to be in your mind. The words or the thought, the intent has to be in your minds. Even if you speak without thinking, it still is in your mind. Now, why am I saying all this? James, why are you telling us all this or, or trying to get us to think along these lines? I want you to be thinking about someone giving you a piece of their mind because that's exactly what we're talking about. Tonight, I want to show you or demonstrate that God has a piece of his mind that he wants to give you. God wants to give us or has given us a piece of his mind, and it's up to us to listen to him. Now, sometimes when people give us a piece of their mind, they, you know, they say, just talk to the hand. We don't want to hear it. They, they turn around, they walk away. We don't want to hear it because the scolding, the chastising, maybe the, uh, the passion that they're putting forth, they want to stop their ears and they don't want to hear it. But I submit to you, friends, that God wants to give us a piece of his mind. But now you may be saying, well, how is that? How can we know what's in the mind of God? After all, look what Paul said in Romans 11, and verse 34, 33. He said, oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Look how vast it is. Look how deep and how overwhelming the knowledge and understanding and the wisdom of God is. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? How do you know the mind of God? How can you hear or how can you know what's in God's mind? His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are so far above our ways. As a matter of fact, if you'll notice in, in uh, uh, Isaiah, let's just get up here to Isaiah, and Isaiah verse 55 and about verse 8, the Bible says, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God's ways, his thoughts, are far superior to ours. As a matter of fact, Paul says that the uh, foolishness of God is wiser than the, than the wisdom of men. The wisest man is still a fool compared to God, even God's foolishness. So God is so far above us, how then can we know his mind? How can we know what he wants for us? Who knows the mind of the Lord? Who can know the mind of the Lord? Friends, I submit to you that you can know the mind of God <clears throat> and that God has given us a piece of his mind if you can read his word. If you can read God's word, then he has given you a piece of his mind. Notice this. Paul says that we can know the mind of God. We can know God's mind today simply by looking at what God has spoken to us. Just like you give someone a piece of your mind by speaking what's on your mind, God has spoken to us what's on his mind, and thus he's giving us a piece of his mind. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. <clears throat> Paul says, as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the Spirit of man which is in him? You see, the things that 
that you know about someone else have been revealed. They have been revealed to you about that person. Otherwise, you don't know. You have to figure out about the person. Maybe you want to know what their favorite color is, what their favorite food is, where they like to go, what their hobbies are. You know those things as a result of it being revealed to you. So it is with God. We can know the mind of God on the matters that he wants us to know if we listen to his mind. And the Spirit of God searches the deep things of God, and that Spirit has revealed to us what the mind of God is in this book. Notice, Paul says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We have received the Spirit which is of God. They had received the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth, to help them to, to uh, uh, present the truth of, of God to mankind. Matthew chapter, uh, excuse me, John, 20, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, what I've said unto you. The Holy Spirit was given to the apostles and inspired writers so that you and I, when we're reading God's book, we can know the mind of God. We can know what God has to say on a matter. And we know that because the Spirit of God was given to men like Paul and they wrote it down. Notice what he says in verse 13. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, now verse 13. Which things also we speak. We speak the things that the Spirit is revealing from the mind of God, not in the words which man wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now watch it, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But the spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself the judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct them? But we have the mind of Christ. You see, you don't have the mind of God or you don't know the mind of God. You can't learn from the mind of God. You don't know what God's about. You don't know what God's like. You don't know what God wants or what he dislikes except it is revealed. And it is revealed by Men like Paul who had the mind of Christ and revealed it to us. They are speaking the mind of God. And that's why Paul says that when you read, whereby when you read, you can understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3 verse 4. You see, when you read, you can understand because they had the mind of God that was given them by the Spirit. God was speaking his mind. He was giving us a piece of his mind when he inspired men like Paul to write the Bible. Now, friends, I submit to you that if you want to know a piece of God's mind or know what God has to say for you, <clears throat> then you need to open up his book and listen to him talk. You see, God speaks through his word. God speaks to us or gives a piece of his mind to us through the things that, that, uh, that he writes. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let me see, Matthew, I want to say Matthew 22, uh, and I want to say about verse, I'm um, sorry, yes, verse 31, Matthew 22, 31, notice how God speaks, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is talking through what is written. God has written his words, and thus you know the mind of God. God always does speaking through, uh, uh, through his word. And so, friends, when we talk about knowing God's mind, you can know what God has to say about a matter. Now, you can't know everything about God's mind. I know there's some people that say God does something or it's God's will that something was done or is done and they don't know God's mind on the matter. 
You know, these, these folks like Shirley Phelps and these people that go around and saying that our, every earthquake and every hurricane and every tornado and every bomb and every war is a result of God punishing a country, particular country, because he's mad at them. They don't know that. They don't know that. You know how I know? Because it's not revealed from the mind of God. You see, we know what's from the mind of God because we have it in the book. But if it's not in this book, you don't know it's from the mind of God or not. You don't know what God's thinking about a matter. And so God has only revealed certain things to us that he wants us to know. Look at Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. God has kept some things back from us that we don't know yet. As a matter of fact, we're going to notice in just a moment that God was keeping a lot of things hid in a mystery. And no one knew about them. The angels didn't know about them because they were hid in the mind of God. But when God reveals them, then we can see what's on God's mind. Then we can know what God was thinking about a certain thing and we can say God has given us a piece of his mind. This, my dear friends, is a piece of God's mind. God wants to give you a piece of his mind, and he wants you to learn from what he has given you, a piece of God's mind. And so the things which the Holy Spirit gave the inspired Bible writers, those were the things that God intended to speak to us when he gave us a piece of his mind. They came from the mind of God. Now, don't tell me what God's doing or what he's not doing unless you will give me a Bible verse. Give me a book, chapter, and verse and tell me what God's saying or thinking about a matter. You see, people tell me, well, God loves me and God wants me to be happy and he doesn't care if I'm a homosexual or God doesn't care if I'm in this adulterous relationship or God wants me to do this and God doesn't want me to do that. I'll tell you one thing, friends. You can find out a lot of things about what God is thinking about a matter if you'll just listen to him. He'll give you a piece of his mind if you'll just open up the book. See, God is giving you a piece of his mind right here, but very few people will open up the book and read what he has to say. Now, notice what Paul said about going beyond what God has said. In 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 6, he says, These things, brethren, have I in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes. I want to teach you something. By the illustration I just gave you, he said, I want to teach you something that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. God does not want you to go beyond what he spoke. Don't start attributing things to God. Well, God wants this or God likes this that you didn't know God wants. See, God didn't tell you that. If you can't find what God spoke about a certain thing, then don't start saying this is what God wants. God is giving us a piece of his mind. Don't go beyond that which is written. You see, only use or only go by what God has given from his mind. But when a man goes beyond what is written, he goes beyond what was on God's mind. He stops listening to God and he starts using what's in his mind and not God's mind. God is giving us a piece of his mind. He wants us to have a piece of his mind. He wants us to know what he's thinking. Paul said in Ephesians 5, and I believe it's verse 17, let me just look here, that it is, it is uh, God's will, or it's his, his plan for us, to know what his will is. Ephesians 5 and verse 17, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God's given us a piece of his mind because he wants us to know him. He wants us to understand him. He wants us to uh, know what he's thinking and be pleasing to him. And the only way you're going to know it is if you listen to what God is saying. Letting him give you a piece of his mind. You see, that's what it's all about. But see, when man devises something that is not from the mind of God, he gets in all sorts of trouble. I want you to notice something, friends, what God says about some things that people were doing and what he said about those things in relationship to his mind. You might, can you see that? I hope you can see this picture. This is a picture of, of a pagan god. Uh, Baal is a Baal worshiper. Molech was, is a god, one of the chief gods of the Canaanites. 
And this is what uh, God's people started doing. They started worshiping after the people of the land. And in this picture, you can see this, this graven image. He's got the head of a bull, and he's got outstretched arms here. There's a fire burning there at his feet that's heating up his arms. And this priest, I guess you could say, this individual is holding a baby. And he's going to lay this baby in the outstretched hands of Molech and offer this baby to this God. Now notice what the Bible says about this type of worship. In 2 Kings 16 and verse 2, 20 years old was Ahaz when he began to reign and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father, but he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Yea, he made his son pass through the fire according to the abomination of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. He was making his children pass through the fire, offering up to these pagan gods. And, and notice what God says about that. In Jeremiah 19, verse 5, he says, They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded them not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. It was never in the mind of God for these individuals, his people, to offer up their own children to these pagan gods. It was never in his mind for them to sacrifice their children. It was never in his mind, and the reason we know that is because he never said it. He never spoke what was on his mind concerning this. He never told them what to do. He never, it never even came into his mind. Jeremiah 32, 25, 32, 35 they built up the high places of Baal, which were in the valley of the sons of Hinnom, to cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Again, it was never in the mind of God. If it was in the mind of God for this to happen, he would have told his people. He would have said, this is what I want. But God did not speak his mind to tell them, this is what I want. The fact that he told them what he wanted uh, eliminated everything else. He said back in Exodus chapter 20, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. He said, when he said, worship me, he then spoke his mind about pagan worship. You see? It never entered God's mind for them to worship this in this way. He told them his mind. What God spoke from his mind eliminated the other things that he did not speak. Now remember, you can't go around and say, well, I think God would like this. Well, you don't know God's mind on the matter. If you would simply read what God wants, you'll know what he doesn't want. You see? If God tells you what he wants in worship then you don't dare go around and say, well, I think God would like it. No, let God give you a piece of his mind. Let God tell you what he wants, and then you won't have to worry, or you won't have to think, you won't have to guess about what God wants. God has given us a piece of his mind about what he wants. And I submit to you, friends, neighbors, that there are some people out here in this religious world who don't care one whit what God says. They don't care what's on the mind of God. They're going to give God what's on their mind. And God has something to say about that as well. God's going to give those individuals a piece of his mind about their attitude. We'll get to that in a moment. But I want you to notice something, friends. God has given us a piece of his mind when it comes to some very important things. For example, let's notice what we have on the mind of God. God's mind, a piece of God's mind is given to us concerning his son. In John 3.16, I think everybody watching this program probably knows John 3.16. Most people draw it like a sword or pull it like a gun when it comes to uh, something about salvation. But in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has told us something about his son. Now I want you to notice what God's mind on this matter was. God, in his, uh, in his mind, devised that he's going to send his son to save mankind. 
in Galatians 4 and verse 4, let's notice Galatians 4 and verse 4. It was in the mind of God that he was going to send his son in a certain way, in a certain fashion. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of woman, made under the law. God's mind reveals this. We're starting to see some of the mystery about what God's plan was. His mind was to send his son like his brethren, to become like a man, to be found in a fashion like a man. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 9. He, did, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but submitted himself, was formed like a man, fashioned like a man, took on the, uh, the nature of a man in order that he might uh, die for the sins of man. Philippians 2, verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. It was in God's mind that this is the life that Christ would live. It was, a, it was an eternal plan. Now that's how long God had been thinking about it. That's how long it was in the mind of God. In Ephesians 3, notice Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 11. The Bible says it's according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. The eternal purpose. Even before the foundation of the world, uh, was laid, it was in God's mind that he would send his son. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. We'll grab 19, 1 chapter 1, 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. <clears throat> you see, it was always in the mind of God that Christ was going to come and die on the cross for the sins of man, but it wasn't revealed. The mind of God was not revealed until these last times that well, Peter's writing and the gospel was being presented. The church was established. His son came, died on the cross. All of the scheme of redemption came to a head when Christ uh, came to this earth. The mind of God was finally revealed upon this matter. You see, God had a plan. He was going to send his son to die on the cross, and he is going to tell us about it. He's going to tell us what he, what he wants us to know about his son, to taste death for every man, Hebrews 2 and verse 9. That was always God's plan, to send his son. Now, see, friends, the reason we know that is because it's the mind of God. I submit any, I challenge anyone to... Tell me something you know about Jesus the Christ. Tell me something you know about God, the Father. Tell me something you know about the Holy Spirit. Tell me something you know about salvation that you didn't read from God's Word. Tell me something about the plan that God had for mankind that you didn't read from His mind, that you didn't hear from having a piece of God's mind. See, this is just a piece of God's mind. This is just a piece of God's mind that he wants us to know so that we can know who Christ is. You know, I, I tell you that there's a lot of people that will tell us who Christ is and they'll give you all kinds of definitions about who Christ is, what kind of person he is. But God didn't tell them that. See? They have such a description of Christ and they have this idea about what kind of, of Savior he really is. They don't know who Christ is. God the Father didn't reveal it to them. Because they have something that is so contrary to the mind of God. See, if you will get back to this book, you'll find out who Christ really is. You'll have a mind of God. you have the mind of God on the matter. you have a piece of God's mind. And it was God's mind, it was his intent, that his son, when he came to the earth, would have all authority in matters of establishing his kingdom and making up the rules for his kingdom. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2, Let's just notice Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners, 
Here's that word. He spake in times past. He's giving a piece of his mind. How did he give a piece of his mind? He spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. It was God's intent to give his Son all authority. He is the one now through whom people, through he is speaking to the people. He is the one through whom uh, God is giving his message. And Jesus was going to have all the authority to delegate to whom he pleased to establish his church and establish his rules. In Matthew 28, 18, he said, All power, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. See, he had all authority. He could dictate to his apostles what to do, where to go, what to say. He gave them the words that they were to speak. And so it's because he has all authority. And it was always God's mind that Christ be the sole authority. As a matter of fact, it's going to be his words. It's going to be the words of Christ that are going to be the final authority on the day of judgment. In John chapter uh, 12 and verse 48, listen to the mind of God on the matter. He said, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Jesus' words are going to be the final authority. Why? Because it was God's mind. God spoke his mind and said, Jesus is going to have all authority. Jesus is going to be the Savior of the world. He's going to be the judge. He's going to be the one who is going to be determining who is right with God and who's not. Paul says we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. Christ is the final authority. His words are the final authority. And it was God's mind that men conform to this book. Now, here's what we're saying, friends. If we know God's mind on a matter, guess what we also know? We also know what is not God's mind or what's not from God's mind. You see, it was God's mind to send his son as the final authority who gave his word to inspired men like Paul and Peter who wrote the Bible. They were the final authority as delegated by Christ. That was in God's mind, but it was never in God's mind. God never thought about it. It never even came into his mind to have guys like Joe Smith from the Latter-day Saints. God never said one whit about Joseph Smith, never told you to believe Joe Smith, never told Joe Smith to go dig in the ground and find some golden plates and then tell everybody he received it from an angel. It was never in God's mind. If God had in his mind to tell us to believe Joe Smith, he would have put it in this book. And the same thing goes for Muhammad or Ellen G. White or Charles Taz Russell. I spoke to a, a <clears throat> gentleman the other day from the Jehovah's Witness. You see? And he had, the, he had a reasoning of the scriptures. He had the New World Translation. He had all these books that the Jehovah's Witness put out. Well, if God, if those were from the mind of God, then why aren't they in this book? Why don't they, why don't they agree with this book? You see? If all of these individuals, these so-called prophets, are speaking the mind of God, how come they don't agree with each other? How come they don't, how come they don't mesh? How come they don't mend together? How come they don't uh, uh, agree? I'll tell you why, because they're not from the mind of God. We know this is from the mind of God. And Joseph Smith's writing doesn't agree with the Bible. That's why the Mormons come to your door and you say, well, do you believe the Bible in so much as it's translated correctly? We do. And guess what the Jehovah's Witnesses say about the same book? Well, if it's translated correctly, we do. But see, there's some old words in there that are left out or some old English words that you don't know the meaning of, and you have to go back to the original. Well, when I go back to the original, guess what I find? I find that it doesn't agree with what the Jehovah's Witnesses say about them. You see? So why is it these prophets don't agree with each other? Why is Muhammad so in, in such disagreement? If he's from the same, if I'm the same God as we have from this book, you see what does the what does the Muslim say? 
Well, this, is, this Bible's corrupt too. Well, that's the same thing the Mormons say. That's the same thing Jehovah's Witnesses say. <clears throat> same thing the Latter-day Saints, or the uh, 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 Seventh-day Adventists say. Say, why? Well, we need her writings. You see, they all have these so-called prophets. God never said anything about it. We have a piece of God's mind about his son. We don't have anything from the mind of God on these guys. Not positive, at least. And that goes for these so-called prophets like Bill Daniels and Shirley O'Neill, these nickel and dime uh, <clears throat> petty prophets over here in Eden and Kernersville. All they're doing, they're just milking the masses. Their messages don't agree either. They don't agree. I can, I can guarantee you if I ask Bill Daniels, does he agree with the prophet Joseph Smith, he'll say no. Now, he may crawfish. He may dodge the question. He may not want to answer, but I know he doesn't agree. You know, why is it that you, you don't agree with Joe Smith if he's a prophet? You see, you don't accept his claim to be a prophet, but you claim to be a prophet? I wonder if he would agree with Shirley O'Neill. I don't know. They may start honing, honing in on each other's business. They may not agree. Uh, that may be the only reason they disagree. But you see how we work, friends? God has given us his mind on who he wants to be running the church, whose rules we're supposed to be listening to, who's going to be the head of the house of God, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 15. Jesus is the son over his own house, Hebrews 3, verse 6. God didn't say anything about these guys. Not positive. He did say something about them. Look at Galatians 1, 6 through 9. This is what, what's from the mind of God on guys like Bill Daniels or Charles Taz Russell or Muhammad, or Joseph Smith. Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. This is the mind of God. God's given us a piece of his mind about these guys. He says, which is not another. I marvel you're so soon removed unto another gospel, which is not another. It's not just like it. And we know they're not just alike. The Mormons don't agree with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses don't agree with the Catholics. Catholics don't agree with... The Seventh-day Adventists, all these so-called prophets and, and vicars and, and uh, 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 Latter-day prophets and apostles, they don't agree with each other. Paul says, it's not another. He says, but there be some that would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As I said before, as we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have, pre have received, let him be accursed. And isn't it interesting that guys like Joseph Smith, they get their message from an angel? Muhammad got his message from an angel. And here, the mind of God is, if you get a message from an angel, let them be accursed. Now, that's the mind of God on the matter. You see, we're not judging these people. We're just telling you what the mind of God is on it. God said they're accursed. God said they're being accursed. That's the mind of God on the matter. You see, you see how, it, how simple it is to get the mind of God on the matter? If you just go to what God says, he'll give you a piece of his mind. He'll give you a piece of his mind. What about this? What about this? Here's a piece of God's mind on matters like his son's church. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this. See, when we, go, when we go back here and we start talking about the mind of God when it comes to his son and the, the authority that his son has, everybody goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I want to hear the mind of God on that. I want to hear the mind of God on that. But when we get down here and we start talking about God's mind on things like the church that his son established, oh, talk to the hand. Don't want to hear it. Don't give me a piece of your mind, God. I don't want to hear that. That's what they do. But see, God has given us a piece of his mind on things like the church. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, he's not talking about Peter being the rock on which he's built. He's talking about the, the truth that he is the Son of God. Peter said, <clears throat> he said, Whom do men say that I am? And they said, Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Who do you say that I am? You're the, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. How had God revealed this to Peter? Well, look at all the works that, God, that Jesus did by God. You see, he came to do the works of the God. He's calming the storms. He's calming the seas. He's feeding, he's feeding the multitudes. All these things that he's doing are fulfilling prophecies about Christ. And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus says, you know what? That's because you're looking at what God is saying. You're listening to a piece of God's mind about me. And he said to Peter, he said unto Peter, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. What, what rock? The rock that he is indeed the Son of God. The truth that he is the Son of God. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Nothing was going to stop Jesus Christ from establishing his church. When someone comes up and tells me the church is not important, the church doesn't matter, the church is not important, all you need to do is be in Christ, you don't have to worry about the church, that tells me you haven't been listening to God. God's got a piece of his mind he wants to give you about the church. And you know how, how important it is? How, how deeply embedded in the mind of God the church of Christ is? Just listen to what he says in Ephesians 3 and verse 10. Now, we've already read Ephesians 3 and verse 11, but let's back up and get the, the, the previous verse. Paul says, To the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, the church of Christ was just as eternal as God sending Christ. You want to tell me that the church is not important, you just want Jesus and not the church? Someone says, I want, to be, I want Christ, but I don't want the church. Well, you know what? The church was, as, was in God's mind just as long as sending his son was. They both were in the mind of God and they were part, both part of his eternal plan even before the world began. The eternal purpose, the church and Christ were in the mind of God. Now don't tell me the church is not important. I have the mind of God on the matter. The mind of God on the matter is that the church is just as eternal, it's just a part of God's uh, plan as Christ is. So don't tell me you'll take one part of the plan but you won't take the other. Oh, no, it's part of God's plan. We have his mind on the matter. There is one body, Ephesians 4 and verse 4. That body is the church, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. I will put it up here again. I know y'all know it. I know many of you don't like to see it, but those of you who do, who do love it, y'all don't mind reading it again, and those of you who don't like it need to hear it again. He has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. What is the church, Paul? which is his body. How many bodies are there, Paul? How many bodies are there? Well, let's just look. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. There is one body. Wait a minute, I thought the church was the body. It is. One body, one church. One church, one body. One body was just as eternal in God's plan as the church was. How long has the body been in the mind of God? It's since eternity. It's just part of his eternal purpose before the world began. How long has Christ been in the mind of God? Eternal, before the world began. How long has the church been a part of God's mind? Eternal. You see, they're all connected together. You can't have one without the other. The church is the body and the body is the church, and there's only one. That is one kind of church. You see, that's the mind of God on the matter. Don't tell me the church is not important. <clears throat> I have a piece of God's mind on the matter. How important is it? Look what God uses the church for. God puts the saved individuals in the church. God puts the saved individuals in the church. It must be very important. And I have the mind of God on the matter that it is important. They that gladly received his word were baptized, and the Lord added, and the same, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Added unto who? Added unto the church. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You see, friends, the, the mind of God on the matter is 
the church is important. He has told us how important it is. How do I know? He's given us a piece of his mind. See, he's talking to us, and he's giving us a piece of his mind. That's where the saved are going to be. Christ is the Savior of the body, Ephesians 5, 23. He's the Savior of the church. Oh, that's right. The Savior of the church. Remember, the church is the body and the body is the church. In Ephesians 5, in verse 23, let's notice. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the Savior of the body. Even as Christ is the head of the body, and he's the Savior of the church. Sounds to me like God has given us a piece of his mind that some people don't like to hear. They don't like to hear this business about the church, the church, the church. I'll tell you one thing. He thought enough of it to talk about it. It's a piece of God's mind. God's mind on the matter is you need to be in this church if you're going to be saved. The church you read about in this book is the body of Christ. And if you're not in this body, you're not in this church, you're not going to be saved. He is a savior of the body. The body. Now, let's see what's not in God's mind. Since God speaks what's on his mind concerning the church, let's see what's not on God's mind. Let's see what's not on God's mind. Man-made churches. God says nothing about man-made churches. Friends, I submit to you that if you cannot find your church, if you cannot find your church in this book, and by your church, I'm, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying the practice the organization, the way you worship, what you teach, your doctrines, if it's not in this book, it's not the same kind of church as the one God spoke about. God gave a piece of his mind about the church of Christ. That is the church that his son died for. He did not say one whit, one iota. It never even came into his mind to talk about the Baptist church. It never came into his mind to tell people, to be in the Methodist church. He never even thought. He never even started to think. He never even started to commence to begin to imagine to tell someone to be in the Catholic church or the Lutheran church or the Pentecostal Holiness church. How do I know? Because it never came into his mind because if it did come into his mind, it would be over here. It would be in this book. But it's not. God's mind on the church is right here. And if you can't find the church you're in in the Bible... Guess what? It didn't come from the mind of God. It wasn't part of the eternal purpose of God. It wasn't part of the eternal plan for saving mankind. Why would you be in it? See, why do you want to be in it? We have a piece of God's mind on this matter. And friends, the, 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 the challenge, the offer still stands. A thousand dollars if you can find more than one kind of church in the New Testament that God will accept and that will get you to heaven. Not there. Not there. No Baptist church in the Bible. You know you can't find it, friends. I'm not trying to make you mad, but it might make you mad. You see, if you can't get, if, if, if God's mind, God didn't speak his mind about it, I don't know why you're getting mad at me. I didn't write the book. I didn't write the book. Who said, well, I'm in the Baptist church and you're in the Lord church. Why? Why? I could play you a clip right now. Well, man, if I could find it, I asked the man, why are you in a denomination? And do you remember what he said? He said, well, because I want to be. Why are, you in a, why are you in a church? Why are you in a church that, uh, that God didn't think enough of to speak his mind about? Why are you in a church that God never even mentioned? Why are you in a church? Well, because I want to be. Let's see if I can find that right here. I just couldn't believe the man said that. Here, here we're talking about uh, uh, being in a church that, that God built, the one that God talked about, and the man says, well, uh, it's because, because I want to be. Well, I can't find it. I can't find it, but I would just, uh, I, I'd love to, to, uh, to find it for you. Let me do this right here. <clears throat> but let me just do this right here. Well, 
well. Let me try one more time. There it is. Got audio in there? You know about all these denominations and things? Yes, sir. We are not done. We... You on the word from the Lord? Oh, uh, yes. I, I just turned over and been watching you program a little bit. And uh, you know about all these denominations and things? Yes, sir. We are not done. We know that denominations are not in the Bible. It doesn't matter who <laughs> named them. The point is, you're in something that admittedly is named by a man, but it's not in the Bible. Now, why would you be in something that God never spoke of? I mean, don't you want to be in the one that God talked about? You just show me. I'll give you $1,000 if you can show me in the Bible, Old or New Testament, where the Baptist church is. I, didn't, I told you before, I didn't see what Then why are you in it? So we sit uh, about I sit down every day and I read so many chapters. Well, sir, every then, day. then tell me why you're in a church that's not in the Bible. Do what? Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? You can't. You can't. Well, I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. Why are you in a church that's not in the Bible? I want to be. 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 Why are you in church not in the Bible? Because you want to be. Here the man said, I've been reading. I read the Bible every day. I get, I get a piece of God's mind every day. God talks to me every day through his word. Why are you in a church then that you can't find the Bible? Because I want to be. That's, what, that's the problem we're having, friends. People just don't want to hear God when he gives them a piece of his mind. He's trying to, he's trying to help you. God is trying to tell you what he wants. And you're sitting there saying, well, I want to be where I want to be. I want to do what I want to do. Well, that's your problem. That's the problem that you're having, friends. Now, why is that? Why can't you just say, you know what? I can't find the church I'm in in the Bible. I'm going to get out of it. You know what God says about it. One church, one body, Christ is the Savior of that one body. And you're saying, I don't want to be in it. Okay. Well, excuse me then when God gives you a piece of his mind later on on the day of judgment. You see? Why? Why would someone come along and say, I don't care what God says about it. I'll take a piece of God's mind on other things, but not on the church. You know what? You've been listening to a man tell you something, friend. You've been listening to a man too long. See? We need to have God's mind on matters, and that's what we need to conform to. Notice this. God has given us his mind on worship. God has given us his mind on worship. In Acts 24 and verse 14, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul says, I'm worshiping, I'm worshiping God. They call it heresy. You know what, friends, when we tell people what the mind of God is on worship, you know what we get back? We get back when we're crazy. Y'all don't have instruments of music. Y'all don't have mechanical instruments of music. Y'all don't have all that hooping and hollering and, and shaking around and, and holy rolling and whatever. No, we have decently in order. Well, that's crazy. Well, really? I've got, a mind of, I've got the mind of God on it. God gave me a piece of his mind about worship. I'm going to listen to him. If God gives me a piece of his mind, I'm going to listen to him. I got a letter the other day from a lady, <clears throat> and she said, she, uh, I, I, she, she sent, got a letter, and I, and I called her back, and she said, well, I want to know what kind of worship y'all have, what y'all's worship like. So I told her. I wasn't really sure what she was wanting, but we, we got to it. She said, well, what I want to know is, are you reverent? And I said, yes, ma'am, we are. We are respectful. We are reverent. And she said, well, I go, I've been to a lot of places, and they're not reverent. All kinds of craziness going around. That's exactly right. You see? Because they don't care what God says on the matter. They don't care what came from the mind of God. We're trying to get a, a piece of God's mind and give him what he wants. And Paul says, I'm trying to worship. They call it heresy. Jesus said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, we have the mind of God on the matter, friends. Why is it 
why is it that so many people want to reject what uh, doesn't come from the mind of God? Why is that the case? Notice this. Paul said he worshiped according to what he was told from the mind of God. Why don't you worship what you hear from the mind of God? Let God give you a piece of his mind when it comes to worship. He's already given it to you. All you got to do is listen. God's given you a piece of his mind. Notice in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, 1 Corinthians uh, 16, verses 1 and 2, Paul said, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Why was Paul giving orders about worship? He was an apostle. He was given the authority. Remember, we read back in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16. Do we need to go back and read that again? Let's go. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16. He said, But we have the mind of Christ. He has the mind of the Lord on this matter. He's going to give the orders. He can give the, the rules. And so he's got the mind of God on the matter. And he says, I've given order to the church of Galatia upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. Now that's God's mind on the matter. But you know what? We get down here and we hear folks uh, laughing at God's mind as if Paul is not really giving us the mind of God on the matter. Paul said, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. God's mind on the matter. That's God's mind on the matter. Is Paul is giving commands, and if he's giving a command, you need to listen to it. Now, let me ask you this. Is Bill Daniels telling you the mind of God? Is he really telling you the mind of God? Some of you folks out there that are being taken in by this uh, con man, that's all he is. He's, he's, a, he's a con man. Is he giving you the mind of God Almighty? He's snookering you. He got you hoodwinked. You know how I know? Because when he is told what is really from the mind of God, he reacts this way. He reacts in such a way that you would think, you know, that, that Paul was a liar. I mean, I know this someone had trouble and you prayed over one that she would be a financial blessing over her that uh -huh. her money troubles would be taken care of right. and then you ask her to give $70 uh -huh. seed gift right. where do you get authority in God's word to take an offering on a Saturday night what's wrong with taking an offering on Saturday night the Bible says on the first day of the week first Corinthians <laughs> 16 <laughs> <laughs> My Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. And you have a shaken together, running. It didn't say what day you had to give it on. It didn't say what day you had to give it on. It didn't say what day you had to give it on. It didn't say what day you had to give it on. Here's a prophet who's telling you he doesn't know what day the Bible says give it on. Another uh, inspired man says, Give on the first day of the week. And here's the so-called prophet who is operating on the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the word of knowledge, not too knowledgeable, obviously it's not a word from the Lord. He's giving you, he's giving you a word from Bill Daniels. Oh, yeah, come put, you, put all your money up here in the bucket. And if it's, not, if it's more than $20, I'll give you a DVD. But if it's less than $20, you better give it the DVD back. See? He's a snake oil salesman. Why? Because he's not telling you what the mind of God is. The mind of God on the matter is worshiping God in spirit that is with your attitude and truth according to God's word. God's word is true, John 17, 17. Now that's the mind of God on the matter. But when we, when we tell you what the mind of God is on the matter, we get all kinds of grief. Now I want to just put this out here for you, friends, uh, you individuals who are talking about taking your tithes to the storehouse. We get this all the time about tithes. Malachi 3.10, Malachi 3.10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there, be, uh, that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that 
uh, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, all these preachers out here are saying that the storehouse is their church building. 